future, we'll think it strange that voices ever travelled down wires. In the future, no one will be tied down. And in the future, the skies will be clearer, because the world of communications will be wire-free. Don't we? The future's bright. The future's orange. The future's bright, the future's orange, is one of the biggest advertising campaigns in the history of advertisement. If you say to anyone over the age of 30, the future's bright, they will normally reply with the future's orange. It is embedded in most people's minds and for many is part of popular culture, arguably one of the UK's greatest brand success stories. The future's bright, the future's orange is one of the key drivers behind Orange's success as a brand. From fourth entrant in 1994 to nearly 10 million customers by the turn of the millennium and the market leader by 2002. But what does it take for someone to create such an iconic slogan that has stood the test of time for nearly 30 years? Who planted that tiny pip that bloomed into that giant orange tree? I present to you the man himself, Larry Barker. Hello, Luke. Here we are with Larry Barker. How are you, sir? Very good indeed. And that's not that's not for you, but it says you'll do. I'll do. Fair enough. <laughs> you started your career in advertisement and are the creator of many highly awarded campaigns, taking top prizes at the British Television Awards, yeah. New York Clio's, yes, indeed, and at Cannes. Everyone has that one campaign etched in their memory. They listed fifteen campaigns that made marketing history. I have picked out the top four. Number one is the Real Dove Beauty campaign. Number two is the Skittles Taste the Rainbow. Touch the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. Number three is the Budweiser Was Up. Was up. Number four, I'm pleased to say, is the Future's Bright, the Future's Orange. And you're the man that writ that. You're the man that came yeah, up with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. The other thing we're good about that is that uh, it's a UK, um, UK, UK advertising campaign that's exported rather than the others are all American ones exported. So it's a bit of a bit of homegrown stuff there. The pride of British advertisement, I would say. Absolutely. Do you remember first being asked to come up with a slogan for Orange? I do remember. And what I may, mainly remember was saying, what a stupid name. And oh, was, Orange? Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, wow. Okay. We thought it was a terrible name. Um, mainly because um, Apple was out there already. So that just seemed like a dumb thing to cause of it. The idea of it being a brand was quite different. It kept saying it's very important that it, this is an orange, orange is not a fruit. <laughs> Why do you call it orange then? That was a bit stupid. Orange is a colour. It's not a colour either. Okay, fine. What is it? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a brand. Orange is a brand. Okay. And also people had a sort of fear of technology. You know, it, it, it was a bit like today. People worry about the future. And computers were just about getting giving a grip on people's lives. The internet uh, was on its way, wasn't it? Yeah, the internet was just, just about to happen. Then, you know, there's a sort of general, oh my God, we're going to be taken over by robots. There was one town where they they got rid of all the wires by going wireless. I just I just thought, like me and my partner thought, well, that's sort of like a positive. And uh, this idea of taking what everyone thought was a negative and could be a positive just started, you know, making sense, really. And that's where the idea came from, that, that you... In the future, we're just going to do what we've always done before. We're going to talk, we're going to laugh, we're going to cry. You know, we're just yeah. going to do it differently. You know, technology is going to make what we do better. And that's really where the idea of the future is bright, the future is orange came from. There's two things which already exist. I and mean, the future is bright is a sort of thought that exists. Were you involved in the writing of the whole ad or just the actual slogan? Were you involved in that or was it purely the, the future is bright, the future is orange, which you... No, for Point. the first, th first th three, four campaigns, we, we wrote everything. But the actual slogan was yourself? Slogan and all the words in the commercials, yeah. yeah. And the idea oh, really? of the commercials, yeah. I came up with the, the, list, the list of words, you know, don't worry, the future's about the future's orange, and all those, you know, what the world's going to be like. But yeah, no, we, we wrote all of it. I mean, we did, we wouldn't let anyone else do it, really. We, we were quite proud of it, really. It was our baby. What is the process of creating slogans? Well, you just got to keep going and you write hundreds and hundreds down and you fill pages and pages of paper. But I mean, what the one we had was just, I just scrawled it in the corner of a pad. And the, the guy who ran the agency came and said, what's that? 
I said, oh, that's the thing I'm thinking about. He was like, he tore it off and sort of ran off with it. But this is the one. And there's always a fear that it's going to sound point poncy, you know. So you think, well, really? You know, can we get away with that? The brand was so, it was so cool, so designery. There came a point within about the first six months where people, we found this out naturally, where people were cutting out little bits of orange card and sticking them to their phone to make it look like they had an orange phone. So then we knew we got it right. When you wrote The Future's Bright, The Future's Orange, in that first instance, or when it popped into the mind, yeah. and when you wrote it down, did you know you had something special straight away? Yeah, my partner at the time said, that's good, that. That's, that's the yeah. one. Obviously, what you do is you take a word, and you think of how many words can you fiddle around with that fit with that word, you know? So, mm. bright, bright, bright orange is, is, a, is, a, is a description of a colour, it's bright orange. And somewhere else I'd... I'd it's a great colour. Yeah, bright, a bright future. It's something you say, you, you know, someone's got a bright future. And I think these two things sort of from various bits of the pad sort of collided. I think, you know, I mean, we probably went, you know, bright future, bright orange or bright, you know, and then you slowly worm it around until you get that thing that's got that rhythm and, and does does the job. I mean, the thing is, the main thing is it did the job that we wanted, that our initial thinking was about, which is about the future's not going to be grim and, and, and it's not going to be like the Matrix, you know. It's actually, oh. you know, I mean, we were wrong, of course. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, totally, because here we are now in the day and age. Yeah. Zooming. Everyone's awoke. So was, was the feeling amongst, like, the, the team when, when, you, when you said, look, I've got this, the future's bright, the future's orange, was the feeling amongst the team quite, was there a bit of a feeling? People went, oh, God, that's powerful. Would you imagine that nearly 30 years later, people would still reference it? No. Would you have thought that. that then? No, not at all. Not at all. So, you know, after three, about three or four years of the campaign, I knew this was going to... It, you knew it was going to sort of last for a bit, you know, uh, and they never changed it. They never changed it uh, until the orange brand disappeared. You know, there was football commentary that talked about, you know, you know, the Dutch scored a goal and someone said the future's right. And you sort of sense they just, you just, you just hit, you'd hit a sort of, I don't know, hit some sort of nerve. People got it, you know. What was the feeling like when you saw the advert uh, for the first time on TV? Um... Well, I've, I've seen, by then I'd seen it about 7,000 times. So. <laughs> Bored of it. And we got a lot of flack from some people who said, oh, you know, it's not saying anything, you know, it's, it's got no it's no product in it, you know. Very, very you know, boring comments like that, but I was quite pleased with those because that was the whole point. It was different. Yeah. It was different, you know. It ran until 2008, so it ran for 14 years. Blimey. Yeah, that's a, that is a long time, actually, for, for Strapline. I mean, you know. 14 years, yeah. Really. Yeah, they come and go, you know, um, that's good. Well, that, that little seed did, did turn into a giant orange tree. It certainly did. 30 years later. How were the weeks and months after it was launched? Is it pressure? Is it excitement? Is it nervy? Or is your job is your job done? No, the job's not done because then really you have to make it work harder. Usually the, the main commercial didn't say much on purpose. It just made the brand look good. Off the back of it, a series of smaller commercials, which did more of the hard work. Would you say that this campaign was the biggest success in advertise in your advertisement career? Um, yeah, I would have thought so. Yeah. Before we came round to do this story of Orange, I spoke to many people. I was testing them. The, the future's bright, and just straight away, the future's mm. Orange came back. So for thir- thirty years later, to to have that is quite a huge. Do you still get royalties? Do you still get royalties? I get a penny. That that pretty much sums up uh, the story of of Orange, oh. and I think it's a very highly successful campaign. And to still be talking about it all this time later, and the people to still reference it, and it to still be in popular culture, everybody knows this campaign. So yeah. you know, respect to you. Fair play to you for that. Like <laughs> you know. Hopefully, hopefully one day I produce a piece of work which, in thirty years' time, some youngster will sit me down and interview me about that work I did thirty years ago. Well, I hope you do too.